we move on to discuss Aston Villa. They'll be playing their first game, first Champions League game at Villa Park as they take on Bayern Munich. Um, to sum up Aston, um, to sum up Aston Villa so far this season, um, pretty you know decent start. This is a team last season that reached. Uh, pretty good start to their season so far. This is the team that reached the Champions League, uh, that reached the Champions League, that are playing in this game for a reason. They finished in the top four last season. So far, through four games, through six games, they have four wins, and they have one draw, one loss. Their one loss coming to Arsenal, um, a team we know that's battling for a Premier League. But that draw did come on this past Sunday. They dropped points to Ipswich Town, um, uh, going away to Ipswich. In a game that is Ipswich, you know, they did create a few opportunities here and there. And Aston Villa, they had those two, you know, they went down early to throw Liam Dilap, uh, Liam Dilap's goal. But they responded really, really well. Morgan Rogers getting, uh, Morgan Rogers and Ali Watkins getting two goals. But then a little piece of quality, a combination of really good quality and some bad defending from Diego Carlos. Dilap gets that goal in the 72nd minute and, you know, it forces Villa to drop points. Um, but overall, if you look at the duration of the season, good start for Aston Villa. Uh, um, I do have to say, uh, you know, and also, you know, we want to take historical, you know, historical after this. Um, Aston Villa, um, you know, they've never played in the Champions League, but they have been a part of the European Cup, which... It's been eventually rebranded into the Champions League. And Aston Villa took on Bayern Munich in the 1982 European Cup Final. Um, this game was played in uh, in Rotterdam, Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And, uh, and it was a really good Bayern side as well. And... Uh, and... Uh, and that was Aston Villa, and they won it. Uh, they won that German. Uh, they won that uh, European Cup final in '82 against Bayern Munich. Um, so you know, you know history, you know uh, history. Quick history, fun fact there. Um, and uh, overall, we know the quality that Aston Villa have uh, in the team. You see, we know what Ollie Watkins is capable of. We see the production as well from Jean Duran, who's done a lot of good work coming off the bench as well. We thought he would be leaving in the summer, but he's been a, you know, he's been a, he's, he's been a big factor off the bench, um, making an impact against tired legs. Um, they're managed by Unai Emery, who gets the best out of his team, that gets the team playing individually, play, playing better than the sum of their parts. And, um, yeah, um, uh, and uh, you know we know Villa uh, w regarding their team news. Uh, Matty Cash he had a hamstring injury at the start of the season, and um, there was thought that he might be available for this game, but he's not gonna be able. He's not expected to be available. So Kunza he's gonna continue our right back in absence. Uh, John McGinn who's an important part of that midfield, he's uh, not gonna be available because he's also suffering a hamstring issue. Uh, but Leon Bailey, he's been getting back into the mix, and um, he's been getting back into the mix now, and he will, he could be in that eleven because they do need all the firepower that can get going up against this Bayern Munich team, uh, and we'll see if Jean Duran, he, I think he will make another appearance off the bench. I think they'll you know roll with the likes of Watkins, Ramsey, Rogers, Bailey. Uh, in the attack, and we know the quality with Morgan Rogers, his ability to run with the ball, to use his power, pace, ability as well. One of those old school sort of, you know, attacking midfield players, really good on the ball. Um, uh, I think Onana and Telemans overall in midfield have done really well as well. So we'll see with Aston. Uh, we'll see with Aston Villa. As far as Bayern Munich, they've had a ridiculously good start to the season. They have. They've won every single game so far, um, besides the draw against Leverkusen. Four wins, one, and that draw against Leverkusen, they 
dominated that game and they they really should have won. But apart from that, you know, they've put up five goals part, part, past Feder Bremen, nine goals past Dinamo Zagreb, six goals past Hoisten Klyl. Um, they're playing some really, really good football. This Bayern Munich team is under Vincent Company now. They're um, they're getting numbers forward. They're playing open, expansive football. They're splitting out their center halves. They're allowing their fullbacks to push up high. They're you know you know they're putting on a lot of attackers on the pitch. They're getting Coman, Musiala, Olise, Harry Kane all on. They're heavily reliant on the midfield, um, the midfield. Um, pivot of Kimmich and Pavlovic, who's been very important in there. and um, But the thing with uh, Bayern Munich is Harry Kane, he, will, he is a concern. He limped off with an ankle problem against Leverkusen this past weekend. Um, but he is expected to be ready and starting at Villa Park on Wednesday. So that's very, very important. We know the goal scorer that Harry Kane can be. Um, how clinical he is, how important he is also, the fact that he can drop down and be a creative player as well with players running in behind. Um, but, uh, but uh, yeah, um, we know the quality from Bayern Munich. They're, they're, they're a really, really good player. I found Aston Villa in this, in this game, you know, you want to take advantage of that back line. I think if you can, if you can play past the initial press of Bayern Munich, you do have defenders that you can go at, at Open Meccano and Kim Min Jai. You see the weakness exploited. I think it's very, very important for Oli Watkins and John, or John Duran when he's coming off the bench to make those runs in behind them to really go at those center halves because they have their mistake waiting to happen. Yes, you're playing against Bayern Munich and they're, they're a very, very difficult team. And if you play too open, they will take advantage. But don't be afraid to go after them. Don't be afraid to press high. Force those center halves to play and see what, you know, and, and try to fill them out. See if they're comfortable playing away at Villa Park in this Champions League atmosphere. Take advantages of the weakness there because I don't think that's an issue that Bayern Munich have solved. I think that, or that Vincent Company has solved. I think that's an issue that Bayern Munich have been able to cover with how dominant that they've been in terms of their attacking display, in terms of how they've been able to control the game. But you, there is a weakness in that Bayern Munich team, defensively, it is a weakness. They, from midfield to attack, brilliant players, quality, goal scores, pace, technical ability, you know, good passing range, everything that you want in a team. They have right qualities in terms of the midfield and the attack. But the center halves are a problem, especially with how high the fullbacks want to push up. They'll be spaced because the center backs will be split out wide and you can go at them. So if I'm an Aston Villa team, number one, you got to, you know, you have to have a solid defensive base because there is a, a quality with Bayern Munich. But once you are able to regain possession, you need to be able to play out of the initial press that Bayern Munich will, you know, you know, will have. You know, they will press. They will have that initial press. If you can play behind that, there is some real real space that they can attack and there's some weaknesses that they can exploit that's my you know that would be Unai Emery and Unai Emery is a brilliant manager and I'm sure this is something that he will be um that he'll be discussing with his team but there is something you can exploit with this Bayern Munich team there really is and and um uh, I'm very excited for this game. I'm really excited to see how the Villa Park atmosphere will be in the Champions League, how high it is. You go back to last season, we saw Newcastle playing their first Champions League game at St. James's Park and whatever, however many years. Um, and the atmosphere, the electric atmosphere at St. James's Park, I'm not expecting that electricity because Villa. I don't know if Villa Park can get as high as St. James's Park is, but I definitely think that can be a real high advantage for Unai Emery and this team to really take advantage of. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for this game tomorrow. And I think this is the game actually that I'm most looking forward to in terms of all the Champions League games tomorrow. Speaking of all the rest of the Champions League games, I will uh, summarize... Um, the rest of the games tomorrow, you have Shakhtar Donetsk taking on Atalanta, Girona taking on Feyenoord. Those are the early time slot windows. And then you have Benfica taking on Atletico Madrid, Liverpool taking on Bologna, Leipzig taking on Juventus, Lille taking on Real Madrid, um, Club Brugge taking on Sturm Graz, um, and then Dinamo Zagreb taking on Monaco.